well, I'm excited to talk to you. We're going to be getting into your new uh, EP and your upcoming tour of Corey Taylor from Slipknot. That's so exciting. Yes. Here at Bionic Buzz, we're all about people's passions. I want to know where your passion for music kind of came from, led you on this amazing musical journey. Was a certain uh, album you heard, a certain live performance, or something that was just natural for you as a child? Um, It was really natural, I think. I, I started singing and I had an affinity for music at like the age of three um, and I would like sing in church and stuff growing up and um, I started playing guitar when I was like 12, 13 and started playing shows when I was 14 so I think it's just always been something that I've, I've loved and that I've wanted to do but I do remember specifically the moment that I wanted to pursue music as a career was after I saw Paramore for the first time when I was 15. Nice. And just like how much energy Haley had on stage and she was just commanding, you know, this this like amphitheater that we were at. And I just remember thinking like, that's what I want to do. That's, that's it right there. <laughs> that's so awesome. It all kind of started there. Very cool. Well, your new EP is coming out. You've already released uh, a couple singles from that. Uh, your latest one is Candy Color Daydream. Uh, I always like talking to musicians, songwriters about, you know, inspiration, how the, how about the song kind of put together, recording process, all that fun stuff, because it's something I wish I could do. Oh, yeah. Um, well, so I actually wrote the majority of the EP. Um, it's a five song EP. So I wrote four of the songs in like a week with oh, wow. this producer named Simon Oscroft, who's an incredible producer from New Zealand originally, but he's based in Los Angeles right now. Um, but I wrote with him and his buddy from New Zealand, who was just like happened to be in town um, named Henry Beasley. And I think we all just had the same inspiration in mind i was like really wanting to pull from like blur and the deftones and the lannis set and this like really cool 90s sound that i grew up with um and modernize it and make it you know my own and and so we all kind of had that in mind as we were writing and candy color daydream i just really wanted to write you know something that felt like a bit of a stoner song that was like reminiscent of like um, the Dandy Warhols, that that sort of era of music, um, and yeah, we ended up writing it about like mushrooms and being on mushrooms. <laughs> so it was, that one was a fun one to make. <laughs> yeah, and the music video kind of reflects that. Where, where where did you end up shooting that at? You know. Um, we actually shot that somewhere in Northern California, more in okay. the desert. We're, we're uh, Lancaster, that's right. I always forget the uh, name. Okay. Because I, like, I had lived in LA for 10 years and I had never been to Lancaster. And then when I went to Lancaster, I was like, this is why I've never been to Lancaster. Yeah. <laughs> it was so unbelievably hot. We shot it at like seven in the morning and it was like a hundred degrees. Oh my goodness. Um, well who, yeah. who, was your, who was your person in the uh, mouse goss? If that must have been uh, super Oh hot. my God, that's my fiance. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true love right there. Man. I know, <laughs> I know. He's like the only person that you, was uh, You also beat up the poor mouse too. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I well, know. it's a great music video, so tell him Thank that. You. Uh, <laughs> great job. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll let him know. I know, I was like, you're a star now. Everyone's going to love you. <laughs> They're not going to know who you are, but... <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, uh, your other each single you've had from that, uh, your your artwork from it has a, a white snake on it. Is there any like a story behind that, or? Yeah. Um, so each of the songs sort of plays with uh, the relationship between the truth and fallacy, and uh, the snake sort of represents a lie, um, and uh, then uh, each item represents something from the story. So with money bag. It's a Bible with like a hole cut out of it with money in it. Um, you know, the telephone for... Yeah, Katie called Lost... a danger behind the mushroom, I believe. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, so there's an, uh, there's an item that sort of represents the song and then the snake itself sort of represents the lie. That's, that's really cool. About. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate that. Awesome. Well, let's dive into your tour coming up uh, next month. I uh, you got you will be kicking off in Connecticut, going all the way to Sacramento, California for Aftershock. Wow, that's gonna yes. be awesome. <laughs> I know. I I am just yeah. I'm blown away by how lucky I've been this year. I just am so excited to 
be putting out this music, but also going on tour with Corey Taylor is like legendary. So um, I'm like still pinching myself about it, but <laughs> maybe yeah, after the tour, uh, I'll feel like, yeah, that happened. But I'm, it's like hard for me to believe still. Uh-huh. Very cool. Well, one of my favorite bands in the world is Muse, and like I said in your press release, you uh, played with them. Uh, I assume at a music festival or something. Yes. Right? Where, where where was that at? Did you get? Oh to my! See um, it had to have been a festival in Arizona. So I grew up in Arizona, and I played a lot of music festivals there. Um, uh, it was either that or San Diego. There, there's a festival called Kaboo. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So it might have been that, um, but yeah, no, it was really cool being able to see them. And my parents are actually huge fans of Muse. It's <laughs> like kind of, it's kind of strange because like growing up, they like loved country music and all this stuff. And then like one day, my mom was like, "We're gonna go see Muse. We love them. They're amazing." I'm like, <laughs> "Where did that come from?" <laughs> um, but yeah, so they they went and saw them when I was a lot younger, and they said it was incredible. It was like when they did their like their different tiers stages that that whole production do you know what i'm talking about yeah, oh absolutely yeah yeah and so when when i got to see them at the festival i was just like this is so cool nice. <laughs> they, they did it there too i mean they bring their production with them everywhere even at festivals they don't skimp out so it was really awesome yeah yeah i saw them and they played at a music festival in, here in florida last december and they just did the whole thing for it was you know for the um their latest album so they had the whole everything on stage that they did which is cool because i was like they didn't come to orlando sadly <laughs> but you will be coming to orlando september 19th for house of uh, yes I'm excited so i'll be covering that and uh, oh nice are you yeah, uh, gonna be at like your merch booth after your set oh totally yeah i always awesome. hang out at the merch booth afterwards say hi to people cool well everyone check it out your new new ep drops next month too on september 4th 14th yes Four starts on the 15th it's gonna be a big month for you so i know <laughs> i'm really excited it's a lot all at once but i'm i'm prepared awesome well i got all your links down below and anything else in the works you're allowed to talk about before i let you go um i mean nothing right now mm. there's yeah just the just the ep coming out september 14th is the biggest thing right now but yeah thank you so much for having me no problem i'll see you uh house of blues in orlando september 19th so hell yeah i'll see you there can't All wait right.